DJs and not jukeboxes. Episode two, we are back podcasting it up. Success and creativity, as always. Mr. Beard Butter himself here. Mr. Sen, got the homies. What up, artist? Big ones. DJ True. Hello, hello. What up, world? We appreciate y'all for tuning in on the first one. The, uh, the launch cast, we'll call it. It was a lot of fun. We touched on a lot of topics. Um, but I'm going to swing it over to True. He came in with some good points today. I want you to just bring up the first topic that we kind of touch on this evening. Yeah, this is um, this is a, a big question. Um, why do people make requests? <clears throat> why do they make requests or feel compelled to make requests? Um so like what's going through their mind, right? Like just well, like we're like let's think of like the, the thought process behind this. So you know, most of the requests nowadays, let's take the the typical night out, right? Most of the common requesters um, show up at the spot with their crew, and they go to the bar, they get a drink, um, and eighty percent of the time, I'll say they don't even make it to like the little location that they're gonna post up at. They just go straight to the booth. They go for the phone and go straight to the booth. And you get like some of those typical, you know, top five. Hey, so it's so-and-so's birthday or whatever, whatever, right out the gate. And right. They go and order their drink and then go order, order their a song. song. Yes. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That's fucking well said. Man. Well said. So, so that's kind of a, an interesting dynamic because I know when I used to go out, that wasn't the case. Like, A, like, you know, the phone thing wasn't as available. So, I mean, I think that plays a big role in it. They were probably listening to it on the way in, already kind of juiced, you know what I mean? Feeling the night. And they have to make sure that they're going to get their movie scene in real life that night that they're out. Because that night isn't worth it to them unless they hear that track. You know what I mean? And it, it, it's, they put so much weight on that one song. And I know we touched on it last episode where we know we're going to play it. Like, we know what you want to hear. But what it's it's interesting to think, like, what goes on in there. Yeah, and I, I think I mean? it's, like, it, it's different cases for everybody. But um, there's, um, there's, there's one instance I always refer to. I was DJing at a... Um, spot I will not name in River North <laughs> um, <laughs> which I, I love this gig but it, it does attract tourists um, and they came up to the DJ booth and it was a um, it was a family it was like um, a mother father and, and their like college age daughter and they they already had their drinks and it was time for them to order their song now <laughs> um, and, and the daughter comes up and I, I at, at that gig I have my my blinders on like my horse blinders on like my peripherals are shut off I don't pay attention to anything around me besides what I'm doing um, but she kind of she crept in there and I could tell you know we can just feel like somebody wants to make a request or say something um, I could feel like she she wanted to say something and I ignored her for as long as I could um, and then she 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 went away I noticed that they looked at the DJs are not jukeboxes sticker on the laptop mm. and were like whispering, you know, amongst themselves, like, psh, 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 and pointing to the sticker, it? right? Should we do right. it? <laughs> and then they didn't do it. They backed off. They nice. enjoyed their drink. They enjoyed themselves. And then maybe two drinks later, you could tell they, they got the confidence <laughs> and they're like, fuck it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. Uh, I don't care about the sticker. I'm just going to do it. Yes. <laughs> Go. And then, and then they just did it. Um, Green light. And it wasn't like it was a terrible request. You know, it was, it was Michael Jackson, but that wasn't th the room for Michael Jackson. So, uh -huh. I, so I, you know, I wasn't going to play it. I guess that's one thing I don't generally think about is, like, the confidence factor of certain, like, requesters. Like, they have to, like, muster up this courage. Oh, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. I, think, I didn't sure. really think about that. It's yeah, that's, a, that's a good thing to talk about. I yeah. mean, so that kind of goes into play with the idea of, like, the different uh, characters and personalities that we deal with, too. Because you get the people that are hella aggro and come up to you and are just like, yo, you know, like right away. Like they just put the phone in the right. face right away. You and you're just place. like, yo, yo, hi, hi, I'm human. <laughs> chill, chill. I'm a human being. Nice to see you. You know what I'm saying? Like I do have feelings and emotions and, you know, like I like to talk to people. Like they're it, literally walking up with a quarter and try to put it. Pretty much. Know, like, right. Song, like know? the quarter is the phone in your face, yeah. essentially. And then you get the people that are just like kind of hanging out and they're like, hey, like. 
you know, you're, you're killing it. You're doing, they try to talk to you in your lingo almost, like what, you, what they think your lingo is. To sweeten you up yeah, before right. they make it. <laughs> to sweeten you up for yeah. the, and no, you're, like, killing it, you're, you're killing it. And like, and like everything you're playing is dope, but I was wondering, and you're just like, ah, oh, you just killed all of that, G. <laughs> so that, yeah, that goes back to that. Like what, what is, how, how like confident does one have to be to go up there? True. You know, and like what setting? Because, you know, like, if you go to, let's say, a setting where, you know, your, your your booth is away from them. You know, that's a that's a mission to get to you, you know? So, like, right. then they probably feel hella, like, rejected at that point. Because they, like, right. went through hell and back to get to you, right. to tell you how dope you are. They came up with a script and everything for you. And you were just like, yo, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's just normal for us because we just, we're numb to it, you know? And that's someone's night out for the first time in, like, two years and shit half the time. So, like... Where's how? What's our balance with that? Like, how, you know, because I'm a human being, I care about other people and shit. I'm not an asshole, but like, yo, like, I mean, it, it, there's a time and a place for it. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, yeah, I, that, it's it's interesting, man. <laughs> talk about when is said time and place? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, no, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, no, I mean, is I, there a time and a place? I mean, there is, and there isn't. I mean, for me personally, when I do get requests, I'll I'll, pl- I'll play if that request is within reason. Like if it makes sense in my set, sure I'll I'll, I'll go for it eventually. I'm not gonna play it like right at that moment, but it's funny though, man, because like some people are just like that confident enough just to like hand you a couple bills just to play it like yo, you gotta play this track and just slides to you like right away like yo, man, you don't even know me and I might even I might not even play this track right now and I, I never do. Yo, I, I, had a real dis- I guess that's twenty though. I had a never real get- disrespectful <laughs> moment where a dude threw a five dollar bill at me and said, "Play Tupac." And I was like, not only did you throw money at me, but I had just blended out of a Tupac track. <laughs> like, of course, you didn't know it, you know what I mean? Because it wasn't like, you know, I get around or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it was just, yo, that's just, like, how do you throw my, like, like as even as, like, exotic dancers, like, that's disrespectful to me to throw it at him. Like, at least put it in, you know, give it to them, you know what I mean? Hand it to them, you know what I'm saying? They're still humans, like... How do I get money thrown at me and shit? And then I'm supposed to be like, yeah, I'm going to do what you want me to do. Right. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. damn, dog. Not you, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. shit. Like, let me dance all on you. No, shit. Sure no, there, but there, yeah. there, there's a, there is, um, it, it, it's, it's a matter of respect. So let's take a little deeper. So like, why do you think people start requesting? So you, you mentioned something a little bit earlier today about like, it became, it came from weddings. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, this is a, a theory I have. Um, a couple years back, I was I was DJing for a, um, a wedding DJ company, and um, got got to see a, a lot of different types of people and, and families, and had to play a lot of different styles of music that I wasn't necessarily um, comfortable playing. Not like it made me uncomfortable, but it just wasn't my my style. Right, right. right. <laughs> but you know, like so, say you're. Um, your first wedding you ever went to, maybe you're five years old or something. More than likely, at growing up, those weddings are the only times you're um, put into a situation where there's a DJ. You're not going to a club when you're 10 years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of where it stems from. So people um, growing up, you know, the weddings are like the big social event that they, they would attend. And um, and that's where that's where they see it. Like, well, there's there's a DJ. We can go make a request. And then when they grow out, not necessarily grow out of weddings, but grow, say, grow into like the bar scene or the club scene, they <laughs> take they take all that. Uh, yeah, I think they take all that with them. Um, yeah. So that that's the theory. I feel like there's there's some truth to it. No, I mean I can I can definitely see that because like growing up. Uh, I think my first exposure to just seeing a DJ in person was probably like, like every year during Christmas, my my family has this like little reunion from like my uh, my parents' hometown in the Philippines, and yeah, that's where I first started to see DJs, and that was probably it might have been the first time I've seen people request songs too, like going up there and like asking for you know the electric slide for like the fourth time because <laughs> uh, literally, uh, literally all lit, literally, literally all line dances at these parties, probably. <laughs> right, and. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, I guess you could, I guess that is like a good, like, segue, you know, to growing up for, uh, 
actually make or make a request now at a club, rather, and just. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's I, a trip to think about that. I, yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. Like, I mean, my first time being exposed to a DJ was definitely a wedding, but then like when I saw house party, you know, when I was younger, I, I saw someone spinning and you know just hearing them play house music and like there's no one going up to them and it's loud and you know it's like okay this is different but and that's a great point i think everybody's first exposure and main exposure let's think about just like general consumers like that don't go out there's so many people that aren't nightclub goers right so their version of a dj is just that like if they go to like a bar that has you know five dollar pictures all night like they're in there and half of these places are promoting it as a request now you know and like or the djs will take requests that's what i'm like, saying like, no problem. Just, that's they they yeah. get on the mic and say like yo come up here with whatever you want to hear you know because yeah. they need suggestions because they're not djs they're not and half the time they're not supposed to be there you know what i mean and mm-hmm. i'll say it like i have so no problem saying it <laughs> i know i got the look but that's cool like i'll, I'll be this is send by the way and i and i endorse that last statement like i stand by it but no i mean like the wedding scene is, 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 I think it's just a different thing to understand. Like, you know, I had to, I was teaching uh, for a bunch of you know, people that were working for a company as well. And, you know, like having to tell them like, hey, like you're gonna be in a request mode, but you see me out here with stickers that say DJs are not jukeboxes, you know? And when I play weddings, I'll take that cover off just out of respect for the couple. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like... Because it's, it's cause an accepted I'm human, notion that right, you make I'm requests. Right, I'm human and I understand it. I'm not, yeah. like I said, I'm not I'm not a jerk at the end of the day. I'm just, I understand the scenario. So the time and the place, I think that's where it comes in. And like, even when I was contracting weddings myself, like I had a part in there that would say, yo, like outside of the bride and groom, there's two people that could come up to me and, and request because I don't want a line. And like, that's all it was. Like they were always down with it and it was always in the paperwork. And that was my way early on before DJs and not jukeboxes way early was reflecting or deflecting that I should say and it would just be like yeah like I'm only allowed to take requests from these two people because that's in my contract <clears throat> and then all of a sudden people are like oh all right well right but yeah, this, I already, this is a rule this is, yeah like this is on <laughs> paper like you oh <laughs> wow okay, yeah yeah they were baffled bro baffled but I felt good because I was like oh wow I found a loophole man like I found yeah, a straight yeah. loophole to it but yeah. I, I mean that's kind of becoming commonplace with a lot of like uh modern like wedding dj like companies or groups like they make sure like they don't get uh the dj doesn't get requested it's just the bride whatever the want the bride and groom want here right so. right and essentially like the night is about the bride and the groom and the family and and like in wedding settings i like musical guidance because i do want to make sure that's a that's an important night for you you know what i mean so you know that's that was my last time doing weddings and not because of that wedding i just i just it's not me anymore you know what i mean i, I don't want to put myself in that scenario right where true. i know requests are are part of it right it's and that's one of the main reasons i stopped doing that correct because I, I i didn't feel right yeah no at, at the end of the day i was like i got the paycheck right, but a, my soul hurts right it's an important day and my soul hurts not even just because of like sometimes what i gotta play but just like for the fact that like the other half like my, i'm not fully here for you you know what i mean and like I've been fortunate enough for the last two or three years that I did do weddings, like even through the company I was working with, like it was very specific people booked me because of what they heard me play. But even in those scenarios, like you still get the family members that are like, yo, play the Frozen theme song. And you're yeah. Like, what? Right, exactly. So then that, that <laughs> yo, what? Then Sorry that... for that wedding. I know you might hear this. <laughs> and it was a kid, you know what I mean? I love the shorty, but it's just like, man, I, like, I don't even know what to do at that point. How yeah. do you even like, where do you play that when like, it's already jumping? Like people already like you know you don't have a trap remix. Yeah, I didn't have that alter tape remix. I didn't have that jump off jump for the dance floor. Shout out to the little Einstein's remix that's out by the way. The trap remix of that shit's hot. Yeah. (laughs) 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 But yeah, it's it's funny how because like I mean. The, the thing about the wedding request, it, it kind of does control the vibe. I mean, the, the, the vibe of the wedding is already set with, like, whatever the bride and groom want. But, right. like, yeah, they, it's funny how they just, like, people in that, like, just at the wedding want to control the vibe, too. And I think it's kind of interesting to bring that back to, like, the club aspect, too. Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? Like, you guys um, feel that DJing is slightly tainted by, like, people who just make requests that are, like, too out of the blue? Like, say you're playing, like... 
like hip hop, but they want to hear like house or like like some EDM shit. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, always. Nice. I got. I mean, I have a really good one that I carry with me. I'll take to the grave. It was the best, worst request I ever had. The the girl was the sweetest girl in the world, man. And like she was dancing her ass off all night. And she came up to me and she's like, "Yo, you're gonna look at me like I'm crazy." But I'm drunk, and I really want to hear the theme song to Moby Dick. And I was like, I don't know. Like, what? <laughs> like, did, like, but, like, I had to, like, ask her, like, did you just ask me for the, like, the theme song? To like, Moby not Dick? Led Zeppelin, Moby Dick? Like, the, the actual... movie. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Not yeah, Led, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Good call on that. No. Not Zeppelin. Shout out to Led Zeppelin. But, no. She wanted Moby Dick theme song. So, like, that was the most oddball thing I've did ever heard. Did you play it, though? No, I, I didn't have it. Sorry, I didn't have Moby Dick in my salad. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but did it like confuse you to the point so where it much. messed up the rest of your set? You're no, like trying was, to fathom where it came. It right, took like, me ten <laughs> minutes to come back. You know, like it took me because I was me. I like to process stuff, and that like that was a good thing right there in that moment. You know, I was about two and a half hours in. It was a good night, and then I like, Moby Dick. What? Like how, dude? How? <laughs> where do you come up with that? Like, and yeah, half the time like. It goes back to the idea of, like, you come out, you want to have your movie setting because, like, that's what the club is. Like, social media created this, you know, artists create this. You know, people in general, you know, create this kind of setting. This is what to expect. So when you go there, it's supposed to always just be like that. Yeah. Right. Like, it's supposed to be Las Vegas everywhere you go. Right. Unfortunately. And, like, you know, something we talked about, too, last episode is, like, the template side of it. So, you know, it's not necessarily their fault, you know? So, you know, you, you grow up knowing DJs as, as wedding DJs first. No, it's learned. And it's not just wedding. It's, it's, well, like, it's definitely learned. It's definitely learned. It's like school yeah. dances. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Like, there you go. When the, when the DJ has reunions. their big binder of songs and you're like, can I look through your book? Yeah. Like how many people yo, say, can I look yo, through your music? Yo, like, wow. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's a throwback. I, like for me, I didn't grow up necessarily with that at all. Like I'm, I'm trying, like when you guys were talking, I was trying to think of the first time I actually saw a DJ like live in front of me. And it's, I can't even remember, but I know it wasn't like at a wedding or like a family event. Cool. Um, so that's for me, cool. like yeah. the whole, like that whole thing of like, going through the songbook songbook and like like when you just said that now it's like oh maybe that's why people ask like once in a while if they want to like see what I right. have yeah to me that's completely like foreign like I that I don't and I don't know again I'm trying to think of like the first time I actually saw a DJ in front of me and I don't think it was like at a wedding and even then I don't think it would have like occurred to me to like go up and ask for a song you know what I mean it, that, that it's just it, that's completely like a weird concept. That's to amazing. Me. There should be more people. Like you. Yeah, because <laughs> I just You're I don't a know. Rare breed, man. I guess I just I don't know. I don't have like a huge family, and like you know I've had like older cousins that have gotten married, and you know aunts and uncles and stuff like that. But man, I just I can't. I feel like because I got into like like hip hop and DJ culture first. Like my at least what I had in my head as a DJ was always like a scratch, like you know a guy on two turns was cutting it up not necessarily like a wedding DJ sure. and also like if I did see a wedding DJ when I was really young it was a guy you know back then it was probably like one of the CD like desk things mm-hmm. like not on turntables or whatever so in my mind I'm like this guy's not actually a DJ yeah. he's just like playing music because I always had the distinction like oh yeah. DJ has fucking you know two 1200s and he's like doing some shit right? I know you're a real one <laughs> and I'm, not even saying that, I'm not even saying that to try to be like a cool guy like I, honestly like if I see a guy like even at a bar like, like a bar you know Sen, you mentioned earlier like guys that are up there like shouldn't even be there like I don't want to say I disagree with that but there's some bars that like don't necessarily have DJs they just have a dude playing music mm-hmm. and usually that dude playing music has a book and has like the tabletop CD player things and, and again, in my mind, and the way that I always view DJing and music is like, oh, this guy's just playing music. He's not a DJ. I'm using the air quotes here because everybody else can't see. But all right, so kind of <laughs> off that point, just to maybe round out this whole topic, like, what was what was our first, you know, introduction to real DJing? Then? You know, and I, I'm going to use that term loosely no. I don't want to get crazy. no for me I think it's it's exactly Ian's experience I know my, my first experiences were in weddings and, and bar mitzvahs and, and those kind of DJs 
Um, right, because we all agreed that we all kind of came from that. So, like, yeah. the next thing is, what was your step into the next? Like, what, oh, just just seeing actually like hip hop DJ. DJs. Yeah, yeah, it was hip hop. It was do hip hop. Yeah, hip hop DJs. Um, you know, like um, I guess it would be. Um, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. To be yeah, because there's a track. Oh. There's a track on their second album where it's live. Um, oh, yeah. like Union Square. Yep. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's just Jeff running through the classic routine. He's using Ultimate Breaks and Beat record, and that was the dopest That's shit nice. ever. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, that was for me. And then from there, we're just like seeing all the DJs and always going to shows and trying to figure out what they were doing up there and what yeah. they were like adding to the show and what was yeah. This? So yeah. what's happening and then getting into battle DJs and then yeah you know. what you mean yeah same thing I mean like I remember like watching like you know videos rap videos when I was younger like later on it was like DMC tapes and stuff but um yeah I mean always like even if it was like a video or like a live show where they would show the DJ for like half a second like cutting or something you'd be like alright what like what is that guy doing yeah what's he adding to the show like trying to figure out exactly what was happening um, and, like, I, and I was like so young, like six years old or something like that. When I was like, when I was like, realized like, oh, this is cool. Like, I want to figure out what this guy is doing. Right. You know, it was still like, like, I totally was wild. that kid that broke the needle on their parents, like combo <laughs> <Yeah>. turntable <laughs> joint when I was like six or seven years old. <laughs> I had the cliche story. As yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I think. Yeah, it, it would be. It would have to be uh, DJ Qbert's Demolition Pumpkin Squeeze music. Oh God, yeah. And uh, but that was like just just hearing it, but actually seeing it. I think it's uh, it's Mixed Master Mike, uh, 3MC's I know. One DJ. Oh God, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. That, that pretty much kind of flipped my whole script. And I think, but really, I think my first exposure just to DJ in general might have just been hip hop because I, I, my, my older my older brother got super into it. Yeah. when I was a kid so that's what that's how I got into hip hop through my brother so yeah I have, a, I have a cousin that's eight years older than me and he, he you know yeah put me onto some shit when he was in high school and I was like yeah eight, and just know? just like you and I would see I would see it in like you know music videos and shit like DJing in music videos yeah even if they weren't really DJing <laughs> yeah right, <laughs> right, sure, right stage right, dropping sure. but regardless sure. yeah that, that's kind of that's kind of like you know brought a full circle for me as a kid like yeah I want to do this yeah <laughs> Like, for me, it was like, you know, I was going to house parties and, and I would see, like I said, people spinning house music. So house music was my first live viewing of DJs getting down. But like hearing it was always the hip hop cuts, hooks, you know, Gangstar mm. and all that. And yeah. Like, so my concept of that, and you talk about breaking your parents, you know, record needles, like that's my, that's my dad. Like I... He, oh, he wanted to whoop my ass so bad over that. Thank God. God bless him for not doing it. But, yo, like, my concept of it was there was one record. So, like, the record would play and then they would just scratch it. Right. So, I would just be down there young as hell taking random Led Zeppelin records. Yeah. And that's what it was. The song remains the same. I had a double LP that I bought for 99 cents. And I broke the shit out of his, like, $150 needle. Yeah. Listening needle. You know, diamond tip and, like, everything. And it was just like, oh, shit. But... When I finally saw it, because I didn't have cable growing up, like I, yeah, I, didn't I wasn't exposed to it. Yeah. Um, I got onto seeing like DMC and turntable TV from all those dudes, Qbert and all that. And that was one of my first exposures, and that was late, dude. I, yeah. And shout out to my homie Focus, man. I used to work with him uh, at my corporate gig. Um, he's a Chicago dude, and like he knew like abilities and all those guys. He would like battle with them back then. But he was like, yo, if you're into this, check this out. He gave me a VHS tape. It was turntable TV and it blew my mind that all that shit was done oh. on a turntable. Yeah. All the soundtrack, everything. And then like yeah. watching what they were doing, I was like, holy shit, there's two turntables. Oh, yeah. And then he showed me DMC. And then I went out and bought a DVD <laughs> from Gramophone. And it sure, was, yeah. It was like 90 through like nine through 2000 at that point. So yeah. like you had crazes, you know, three yeah. to yeah. end it with. You had noise in 96 mm -hmm. I think, which was a, a phenomenal routine yeah like still to this day like the tone play and how he did it yep. was just super fresh like yeah. a track the, you know the classic a track joint so it's yeah. like that exposure to me was it like i was 18 17 at that point i was like oh wow this is yeah this is it and then again like i saw i think it was dibs at the metro um, oh shit yeah. yeah and he i yo he he cut 
an Ozzy Osbourne record over a hip hop break beat that fucked my whole world up. Yeah. Because I was a rocker that kid. That was his bro. thing, yeah. I was a rocker kid. I had Jankos, long hair, like all that shit. And and none of my homies were really into hip hop. Yeah. And like my homie, one homie put me onto Atmosphere. They were there at the Metro. I went and saw the show by myself and I saw this dude and I was just like, what the fuck? This is DJing? I was like, yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm in there. <laughs> so that was it. I went and like, Six or seven months of layaway and shit, and like working at Old Navy, and I got my first set. And like, you know, shout out to those checks. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And then we're here. We're here. So now I understand it. All right, so let's talk about, let's expand on the the relationship between consumer and artist. And we're not just talking DJs here, because, uh, you know, the whole point of DJs and not jukeboxes essentially is the idea of success through creativity, right? And we represent this and the platform that we use as DJs, but there are so many friends that we have that are in so many other fields, whether creative or not creative, that feel the same way, that you don't have to be a machine, you know, and, and to be successful, you know, you can use your own brain power to get out there. So let's talk a little bit about the dynamic of, of uh, the heckler. So, you know, True brought up- The heckler, yeah. yeah. Um... I was watching a documentary, a uh, Jamie Kennedy documentary called Heckler. Um, and I guess he gets heckled all the time. He just gets shit on as a human being. <laughs> um, right. So he decided to make this documentary and, and talk to other comedians and their experiences with hecklers and just the psychology. They, they even talk to psychologists and you know, medical professionals about what drives people to, to heckle. Um, but there, there's a, there's definitely parallels between um, what comedians do um, or have experience in that regard and, and what we experience with requests. <clears throat> it's essentially the, the, the same thing, I'd say. Um, you know, um, a comedian's trying to go through their set, someone heckles them, kind of th- throws them off what they're saying, then they have to address this heckler and shut them up and then go back to their, their bit. Um, it, it's similar for us, you know, we're, we're finding our vibe DJing. Um, and a lot of the times, I know, at least for me, like, I can, I can feel the room, but I'm not necessarily, like, in it or, right. like, really just, like, watching it intently. I'm just I'm just feeling the vibe and then playing off that. Right, right. Um, then a requester comes up and it just takes your whole, your whole vibe away. And now you have to go attend to this person. Yeah. And however they may be behaving when they're making their requests, and then somehow try to get back into your vibe. Um, I was watching our, our Chris Carnes interview, um, and he said something about that. Like um, it was pretty much th- th- that exact point. You know, it just th- the request takes you out of out of your zone, mm-hmm. and it's not it's not always easy to to just find it again. All right. You All know, right. there's times where I, I've had a request maybe an hour in. And then the rest of the set, I'm struggling to get back to where I was. You know, prior to the quest, I'm like, damn, I'm feeling it right now. And I have this whole set planned out. And then it's like, fuck, what am I going to do now? Yeah. <laughs> and it's all live in the moment. So you don't really have time to like take a break or yeah, anything. Those are you, you know. off, like, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, hecklers, they, um, I guess uh, a, a lot of the points the documentary is making, it's, um, it's, it's the different personality types like we were saying earlier different different types of reasons why people come up and make requests but um i guess it boils down to um people either wanting attention the attention to be on themselves or about them um people that are just straight up assholes and are trying to mess with you for whatever reason um people that just want to participate they see something fun happening they want to participate um, and then there's people that actually understand what we're doing. Those in my mind are the best requests. They like come up and they might not even request anything. They're like, I'm not, they may come up and say, Hey, I'm not requesting anything. I just want to let you know you're killing it right now. Right. Like those are the best requests. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So no, th- there's definitely parallels between what comedians and DJs experience. Um, Yes, because well, you're out on the stage, kind of like by yourself. You yeah. know, you don't have, uh, you know, it's like there's no, there's very little like filter between you and the audience. You know, it's like you and then everybody else. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, and I was gonna say like I I never thought about that 
similarity in the dynamic and you know how once is saying like the idea that there's no barrier essentially like you know you think about like maybe chefs essentially like they're in a kitchen so nobody's gonna be there to judge them while they're preparing their dish they, right. they mm. present to you that final dish that's how you get judged as a chef whereas us like people are there during our creative process, the process yeah. and you know um, i had a i was very very fortunate to uh have a really great conversation with rich medina one day uh and he basically stopped me in the middle of a conversation and said yo like i could tell you're a spiritual individual so you play with your soul and that's kind of what true's touching on and i think all of us you know that's one of the reasons we all kind of came together with this whole thing is just that like we do go out there and we care about what we're playing and how we play it. So when we're in that moment, we're definitely consumed in that moment. And, you know, to have that flow interrupted is a big thing, you know? Like, I mean, that's like, you know, come, like if I walked into the studio and just like straight up interrupted you during a verse while you're just recording. Pull the mic away. Yeah, yeah bro, like, come on, like you get a mouth shot for oh, that. Really? Like, you get shot for that in a lot of like cities and shit. But and like, if you really want to take it there, like fucking, that's, that's your spot up. That's your meditation space. Ex- yo, like, yeah. let's talk that, about therapy. Then, you, know you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, your, your thoughts are running. You know, you're, you're in good energy. And then someone just, you know, grabs, pulls your arm and takes you out of that moment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, also, it's yeah, what I think what people don't realize is that if you're a DJ with any kind of skill or, or you know, competency, you know, you're, you're not only playing the song that's playing right now. You're thinking like three, four, five, 20 steps yeah. ahead. Oh, yeah. Like, all right, after this, which way am I going to go? I can go yep. this way, I can go this way. After yep. that, which way am I going to go? So it's like doing fucking algebra on your head at all times while you're trying to entertain people. It's and an then when somebody of- breaks that concentration, it's, yep. yeah, it's, yo, it can be. Yo, yo, shout outs to uh, Craze getting interrupted at the mid by a crazy cell phone dude. Oh, <laughs> word. Talk about, uh, you know, level of skill being interrupted. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's a little much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, there's So when we did the Craze interview recently, uh, we filmed that yeah, at the mid uh, sometime over the summer. And Craze was doing one of his routines, and in the midst of that routine, some guy with a cell like there's some dude with his cell phone on, runs into his face and just ruins the whole thing. And then you know the crowd being super into it, you know, just they they they, they got taken out of that moment. So just kind of imagine that, like on that parallel, like just Shout for every DJ. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. Like yeah. the crowd got taken out of it, and there's always that person that comes up and will say. Hey, you gotta play this. Everybody's gonna love it. And then if you actually play it, it's gonna fuck it all up. <laughs> like right, that yeah, right. mixed results. So. so let's go back to the idea of the heckler, right? And we are in front of people, right? And essentially people go out and they are there to judge the DJ, right? Like they're there to judge the music taste, right? The same way if I go to a comedy show and I pay, I'm I'm in the mindset already of, all right, what does this person have? For right, me? like, show so, me what you got. Right, Prove yourself. so, correct. So, yeah. just understanding that dynamic, that's the consumer side, too, when they walk into a spot now, essentially. It's like, what do you have for me? But the difference is, they don't even give it a chance because yeah. they just say, well, I don't care what you got for me anymore. Now, like, and that's, maybe where the small disconnect is with like the comedian where like they're based on the jokes and the lead into the joke you know what i mean and you know whatever they're saying at that very moment and just the way we could sway a set however we want they could sway their set you know and they may say something that is slightly out range of what they're trying to do and where they were trying to go and that could create an entire ball of peck that, right. I mean, yeah, I mean, th- but the parallel is definitely there. No, no, I, that's that's the like, only disconnect I would say. I I, 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 still think like comedians have a certain level of like uh, imp- improvisation. Too. Absolutely, like, they, they can play oh, yeah. off that person. Right, like, you can totally they, they go can, in on that person, yeah. and, and, and then they win the crowd. Like, and it works with it. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, absolutely. So, Where, whereas we like, how do you counter that? Like, you can't count. You can't tell jokes about that person. It's true. You know, and that's where sometimes I've gotten had to get on the mic and say something. Well, yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because again, like, yo, if, you, if, you, if you're tugging at me physically, like, yo, you grab my arm, whatever, like, yo, no, no, I'm sorry. Like, yo, my favorite is when, uh, no, <laughs> is when the audience feel, or like someone in the crowd just feels otherwise. Like, I, I DJed uh, The Whistler with Marco Morales a couple of years ago and like, this girl, like, Marco's playing and girl comes up to me and he's like, yo, 
he's 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 he's, t- he's terrible. He's he's killing the room right now. Like people are leaving the dance floor, and but there's like <laughs> the, the, the three people. person dance floor. At, uh, <laughs> <laughs> There was a fuck ton of people just like chilling. Or not even chilling, they were dancing. And it just, she just kept going on and on about how awful he was. Like, yo. Wow, <laughs> really? Yeah, we need to thought, get... No, that's, that's, I'm glad I was there to help Marco, like, not him, like, let him not have to deal with yeah, 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 no, for sure. You were the filter right there. But yeah, it's yeah. just funny, man. Like, I'd love to get animosity, a, yeah. I'd love to get a comedian in here to talk to us about that. Because, you know, the the dynamic being so close to each other each other is is crazy again i never thought about how close we are to yeah. that because again there aren't many professions like let's take a live band like a live band they have songs and if the song sounds like it did on the record people are gonna be happy that they paid that money yeah. to go see yeah. that's all that, that's what they got to do right there otherwise they get booed you know and it's like you know technical difficulties even if they whatever. did it like a couple octaves higher or whatever the case yeah. is a little yeah. faster a little smaller yeah. you know depending on the age that they're at and where they're at in their career you know what i mean but like we are on the spot the same way you know comics are and and that's interesting because you are a solo person right on stage in front of a room full of people that walk in there already with the mentality of show me what you got yeah and and with us but see that's crazy to me again because like i also like i also have always made the distinction of like bar or club dj and then live show dj because there's a difference like live show dj and and the difference is if everybody's looking at you that's like a show situation if everybody's at a if everybody's not looking at you meaning looking at each other or looking at the dance floor or getting drinks that's like a bar club situation like you know when you like if it's a show situation and yeah everybody's looking at you it's like yeah you should be under that microscope and if you're not good then you know you should get booed or fucking you know some shit thrown at you or whatever but if you're at a bar like or club you go you should go to a club to fucking hang out and hang out with your friends and fucking holler at some girls and get some drinks and do whatever like why would you go there just to like antagonize somebody or fucking you know like well that's what it turns into i think again because like this just from my that's like my perspective like i would never like if i go to a place you know like when i was younger and going out a lot if i was going to a place and dj sucked i would just fucking leave yeah i I would go somewhere else right right but that's but that's what i mean so we talked about that too and that's maybe like where the sense of entitlement then comes in with with some of these people and their personalities like you can almost see like how these people are in real life just how they approach yeah. you. Yeah. Because they, again, they don't... It's they have the time. Yeah, yeah. They have yeah. the time. They don't even treat you as a human being. Yeah. And it's like, yo, well, how... They, they come to the club or bar with the animosity yeah. already. How so, selfish... Right, right. How, how selfish do you have to be to walk in and say, I know what everybody needs here. Right. That's right, like me right. walking up to you and saying, yo, guess what? I don't know shit about your life, but I'm about to tell you the sauce. Right. Yeah. This, yeah, is, yeah, this, is, this is what you should do for the rest of your life. That's exactly what that girl was doing. I was telling you about that earlier. Yeah. It's just like, yo, it's just trying to like, yo, if, he, if he's not going to do better, like, are you going to do better? Do, do I need to put you on the board? Right. On the spot? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yo, and, it, yeah. and, and, and it's crazy because like, you know, sometimes you got to check people and then you, you wonder like, yo, have you ever been told no before? Like, yeah. you know, like you get those, the girls that are super cute and they try to use that shit. And like, I don't care about that. Like if, look, mm-hmm. I'll say like this, man. I already know when there's the cute girl standing there smiling, the only reason you're standing next to me is because I'm the fucking DJ. <laughs> Stop playing. Because when I walked in and I saw you and I was like, damn, you're real pretty. And I just looked at you casually and smiled. You turned away. Like, I wasn't <laughs> So guess what? Now I remember and you. Then, and, then, and then you walked to the booth. And, and then like, you're just oh. like, hey, oh my God, that uh-huh. beard is the DJ. You're like, yeah, fuck off now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because now you didn't treat me like a human being. And I didn't need your number. That's not why I smiled at you. It's just a casual interaction between two people you know but now I mean? you have something to offer right right so that you yeah. know that and that's a deeper point like it's the idea that like if you have nothing to offer me then why should i be kind to you and that sucks because that's how a lot of people think and i think that's where we're all different because we understand the dynamic you know what i mean like i get that people are raised a certain way i get that people you know have been conditioned a certain way with what we do but like it's okay to like for someone to not agree with you yeah. like just because like you were to not give no, you what you want right that's what i'm saying you just right. heard no yeah. for the first time right. probably in your ever. life yeah you know yeah. and again like the smile's cute it real teeth are straight you know what i'm saying but like yo like 
I'm I'm not sorry. Like, no, this is not what I'm going to do. I'm yeah. not going to play a super turn up record at 1030 because you and your girls are pre-gaming here. Yeah. Because you right, go to the next spot yeah, yeah. and you're going to hear it at 1230 anyways over there. So just wait for it. Like, it's going to feel much better in your yeah. soul when you're juiced up even more yeah. and it's yeah. a little later in the night and the conversations are different. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. wherever you're going to go, probably the person's going to play it anyways. You know what I mean? So it's like, if it's the hot joint, it's the hot joint. You're going to, you go anywhere 90% of the time in here. So like, right, right. don't, yeah, don't come in with that animosity. Like, I don't know, man. People just need more hugs, I think, yo. Like, I think people are just missing hugs in their life. I swear to God, man. Like, like half of these people, I just want to hug them. I just want to be like, yo, just just come in, man. Just like, let me give you a real hug. Like, I don't know when the last time you had a hug was that, actually, that someone actually, like, cared and gave you a, a, a hug that felt something. But you really feel like you need a hug right now, man. Like, you know, like some of these women come in there, like, hella aggressive, thinking that we're all scumbags and shit. And right. it's like... All you got to do is say, excuse me. And then I'll like, I'll tell you, yeah, hold on. If I'm not in the middle of a blend, I'll engage conversation with you again. I know why you're there. But like, if you're nice, like, yeah, I'll say hi. Because I'm I'm representing the bar still. Yeah, what there's definitely the some that? requests. I'm professional at the same time, right. And and yeah. I'm lucky enough to know that in these places, when I do have people that come at me, I could go like tell security or like get on the mic and like make it known that there's no request, which that's kind of the heads up. Like, oh shit that girl or that dude right there you know mm. is, is coming at them. so it's like mm. whatever man like it's cool we get y'all like i understand like again i'm here if you need a hug man you need somebody to talk to we're here for you man <laughs> don't come at me though like it's not nice like you know what i mean like it's not nice it's just not nice well there, there, there's a way to do it i think yeah like, and there's times where people have come up and requested something in in the quote unquote popular or um approved way um, I didn't have it, you know, let them down easy because they were, they were being cool about it. And then it just turned into a whole just side conversation, just chopping up about anything, you know, just life or something. Um, and then maybe I'll find a way to make their request happen. I don't know. It's just the, the exchange was more, more real. Um, but when people come up trying to place their order, that that's that's not what it's about, oh, right. that's you know. So, so like they they go to the bar, they make their order, but that's not how it works no, that's, with no. place the with, order. with the Ooh. DJ. I think. Um, <laughs> Yo, shout out to the homie though. Uh, I met this dude at Harvey's um, a while ago. Real quick story. He came up to me. He's just like, Yo, I'm a super hip hop head. Like the way you're playing shit is really dope. Like you know, it's dope to see you on a laptop, but playing like you you would vinyl. Like I could tell you know vinyl. And I was like, Oh, that's dope. And he's like. He started naming artists and shit. And I ended up being like, what's your favorite artist and shit? And he's like, oh, one of my favorites is Nas. And I just happened to be queuing up a Nas song. I'm like, oh, check it out. And it was that moment of like, dope. Oh, like, cool, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, a, Those a, are the best. A balance. When you're already going to play it, Yo, those are the easiest that was, I think that maybe I happened like once people. or twice. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he was just bugged out. And that dude ended up following me like, like anywhere I was at. Like he would bring his family out, like if they were in town. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like that's cool. Again, that simple interaction. Just like, yo, dude came up and like waited and like, you know, I looked over, I was like, What's up, man? And he's like, Yo, I don't mean to bother you, but yeah. like he just, Well he recognized what you were doing. You you're an artist creating. Yeah. And and that and that that respect was there from the from China. And it was a normal bar setting. Like if you know yeah. Harvey's it's just you chill at a bar, you drink yeah. a beer and like that's what it was. So it's dope, man. Shout out to the people that get it, you know. Like I said, shout out to people that don't. Like, we want to educate you too, you know? Like, we don't want to be here to, like, shit on you. Sometimes. We just want to tell you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I want to tell you why I, you shouldn't come up to me. Like, if you want to have that conversation, you know, hit me up. I'm cool. Like, I'll talk about it all day. Like, this is where I live, you know? It's not like it's scripted and I got to carry something in my, in my phone, you know? It's like, it's there. Like, I'll have the conversation with anybody at any time. But again, like, you got to have, want to have that conversation. Yeah. You know? Like, half these people don't want give shit no no work, no work. and that's like we we're saying that at the top of the the podcast like the whole drunkenness effect mm-hmm. you know that reasoning with a drunk person is is an exercise in futility and <laughs> when it comes to that point maybe <laughs> drive time like and you're trying to reason with them and then they whether it's a guy or the girl and they just flip on you it's like well sorry like i'm not gonna go down this road with you <laughs> you know i got work to do yeah so or the girl that like comes up and the, like you're saying the, the the cute girl that comes up and you tell her no, and I've had it at this unnamed River North bar had this happen <laughs> a lot. Um, Spot. Well, all the girls down there are cute, but it, 
Shout out to River North Shore. <laughs> it's one of the upsides, I guess, of DJing down there. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you tell them no, and then, then they pout. They'll like mm. just straight up just look at you and just pout. Like, I'm like, like daddy didn't give. Them I'm like, card does this now. work for you in real life? Like, <laughs> what, what, what do you think this is gonna do to me? Like, that's when they didn't get the credit card, though. <laughs> that's the same look they give. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, but that's cool for us because then, like, you know, like we've been through it. We see a lot of different personalities. So we can, I don't, again, I don't mean to say it's judgment, but like we can tell that, like, you know, your first impression is huge. So especially in that setting, like you know what it is. If you're gonna pout, like, you're a grown ass adult, like. What are you pouting for? Like, right. for real. Like, no. you, use your words. Are, are you here on a fake ID? Because that's going to make me want to say, like, yo, are you under 21 at that point? Because that's some really young <laughs> shit. Even guys do that, too. Oh, hell yeah. Funny, Dude, like, those feelings get hurt yeah. when they hear no. It's like, damn. Yeah. What, like, it, does, is it a society talk then at that point? I mean, that's where my mind goes. Like, damn, and we've been conditioned to just not hear no anymore. Oh, like, yeah. That's, that's, I mean, when I was in yeah. grammar school growing up, like, not everybody got something in the science fair. You know, like there was an honorable mention for like two people because that was second and third. You know, but like yeah, not, not everybody every gets could. trophies. Everybody yeah. gets a trophy now. Everybody right. gets something else, and it's like, damn, there's no resilience with these kids, oh, bro. Yeah, there you go. You that's know what I'm saying? Society, and and that's what I'm saying. Like, and that's unfortunate because then, like, when they hear no later on in life, it's like, why? It's like a dynamic. It's like a, it's a yep. thing, bro. It's well, like, they don't. Know you how to tapped into to some. It. You tapped into something way bigger than like you were just. You just said no. You were just being hella just cordial about it too. You're just like that's when you hand them a card to a therapist and you're like, go work out your problems. Yo, yeah. Again, we're back. here to give hugs too, fam. If you need a hug, bro. I know what it is, man. Like sometimes we just need a good hug, bro. That's all. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's unfortunate. Like we're, we're we're thrust into an environment that doesn't respond to like humanity or reason. You know, just bars and yeah, clubs. Yeah. And, you know, and then when people are drunk, it just exacerbates it all. Right. Yep. Um, and then we're, we're left there to just, like, be at the helm. In and, the eye of the storm. <laughs> right. And, yeah, straight up. And try to keep your focus, do your shit, and manage all of this insanity rolling around you. Like, oh, man. It, it takes a... Don't be a DJ, guys. <laughs> yeah. Don't be a DJ. Don't. <laughs> uh, no. That's great. All right, so to... Uh, to wrap up, um, we're talking about how, you know, art is, is taste. It comes down to that. And it's, you know, it's an opinion, essentially. And, um, you know. Yeah, and, and we're, we're artists, we're creators. And, and, and when we're DJing, we're creating. Um, and our, our art at that point is, is very much live and in the moment. Yeah. Um, and it's all the, the, blood, <clears throat> the blood, sweat, and tears, us putting our heart and soul into it. And we're we're just projecting it out there, right there in the moment for everybody to to experience and feel. Um, and it's at that point where it becomes a matter of taste and how people interact with it. Yeah, for sure. I think um, artists said it best earlier, where you know he, they're not responsible for thinking about our lives and what we go through, you know, to make it to that night and that that ten percent of our life that they get to experience and. At the same time, you know, respectfully, we're not thinking about theirs. So we understand the dynamic. We understand why you probably don't get where our blood, sweat, and tears did go into it. Because, you know, if you go to my Instagram, you see my highlights of my, of my life. And you see all the cool shit that's going on. And it's like, damn, that's the life of a DJ. And anybody else that I know, like, you go to any of my friends' pages that are DJs, it's the same thing. So that's a person's direct you know, relationship to you now as an artist. And they're like, yo, he's living a dope life. But it's like 99% of the time that I'm playing, it's a therapy thing. You know what I mean? Like you have no idea what just happened that day or that year or whatever. Because for whatever reason, I just played that record. That was something for me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's therapeutic for us. So in the same respect that you see a live painter, you know, like on the streets of New York, let's say, like you wouldn't go up to them and be like, yo, what are you doing right there? You know what I mean? Like, While they're creating it. You should use some more red right there. Yeah. yeah, like you would never do that. So like, that's all we want. We just, we, 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 like, we, we play just for that respect almost, you know? Like we respect our craft and the art form that, you know, saved a lot of us and put us into these positions and created these careers for us so much that, we do put our soul into it and that's our way of putting it back and giving back to that. You know what I mean? And it's like, I get that you may not understand that, but 
that's why we have these discussions. You know what I mean? That's why we want to talk about it. That's like, that's why, like, we're telling you, yo, we don't have to care, but just know, like, a lot of us are here because we really want to be here. We're not here to get girls. Like, I don't care about, like, we're, like, half the homies I know got kids and families. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're doing this because this is what we do. This is what we know, man. It's not for the bottles and the pictures and shit. Like, yeah, if we happen to do yeah. cool festivals and shit, right on, yeah, you know? Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, that's your perspective of what our life is. But like, yo, if you ever ask me how my life is, well, let's talk, man. Like, I'm, I'm an open book, gee. Like, that's why I'm I'm very, like, I'm cool. I, I'll say what I want to say in that respect just because I'll back it with whatever you want to know about me. Yeah, and and I think art, um, it, it flourishes in a, in a supportive, open non-judgmental environment um and i think it, it goes both ways where if we're feeling that from the crowd it's going to make us produce a better set yeah. and then it just feeds back into, you know the singular but it's not always the case where the environment we're in is a supportive nurturing environment it's always very or usually you know or can be confrontational um and it really does no one any good at that point. Yep. So. Shout out to energy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Any, any last thoughts from you guys? Brrrat. Brrrat. Yeah, that's, that, that's about it. That that's where we're at, yo. <laughs> I want to thank everybody that tuned in. I think this is going to be officially called The Heckler. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Real so. quick, uh, DJ Cray's interview is out now on YouTube, yeah. Facebook, yes. all socials. Check it out. Give it a give it a comment, like, share. Get that in your life. And there's a bunch of interviews on YouTube too. <laughs> you know I mean? We're out here. DJs are not jukeboxes. Episode two in the books. Yo, yeah. peace. Bre, bre.